Okay, here is the first of three triathlon specific training workout videos for you, whether you're a novice or an elite triathlete, to help you with your strength, your stability, and your mobility on the swim, bike, and run legs. Now, I've split this into three videos, so you can do it in between your normal run, swim, and bike training sessions throughout the week. And every exercise we go through in order, so you can follow along. So let's get started. Okay, for the swim leg, it's mostly upper body that we're doing, plus some core, plus some mobility. Now you're gonna need a couple of power bands for this, a weight like that, probably a foam roller, and definitely some bands. So let's start off with the back part first, so the rowing stuff. There's gonna be three rowing exercises I want you to do. Now with the bands, what I would do is put that around something high for the first one. You need a length with this, so I've got two together because it really gives you that nice length that you're gonna do for a pull. So I would wrap those two together like that, and then what you're gonna do is a straight arm pull. Now it's like mimicking the swimming stroke. So you need to go into like a deadlift type bent over row position, keeping your back in neutral. Now instead of pulling, what you're gonna do is you're gonna swipe down and back like that. So think of if you're in the pool, you're doing a full pull through with the arm, and so you're trying to work on isolating mostly your lats, with this, okay? But of course, you're generating some work in the rear delt and the tricep. So this movement here, it teaches you to be nice and stable as well. So you've got to keep your core on, keep your back in neutral, so you don't move through this midsection. And you'll find a lot of these exercises, I'm teaching you to try and work on one area and stabilize through another, which is going to get you a lot more efficient and stable when you are swimming. So. With this one, obviously do both arms. This way you'll work out which arm is the strong arm. Most swimmers have one strong arm, one weak arm. So try and make sure that you are always doing one side, not two sides together. Okay, so one side, then the other side. And just work on, say, sets of 10, perhaps up to 12, okay? If it's eight, it's probably the band's too heavy, okay? If you can do more than 12, band's probably too light. Okay, so just working on, trying to keep stable, straight arm, and trying to avoid bending your arm. So that's your first row one. Okay, second pull exercise is a suspension row. Now you don't have to have a fancy TRX, you can have any suspension trainer, as long as it's nice and sturdy. With this one, it is two arms, but you can advance it quite well, depending on your ability. So if you're a bit of a novice, or you're not so strong, what you can work on is rows just in a semi-upright position like this, okay? Nice and easy, depending on how strong you are. When you get better and better and better, you're just gonna go forward and forward and forward with the feet, so you're more of a angle like that, okay? And so you're really working on trying to do a row, full row with this, shoulders back, pull through, okay? And then as you get better and stronger, you can advance it to a real sort of prone right row. Make sure with this one, you're not dropping your bum down. So keeping your bum up and pulling through like that, okay? Full protraction, full retraction, and then pull through, all right? And make sure that you're just not overloading that one too much, that you're getting too much upper trap work. So with that one, you can, if you're really good at that, you can advance it to one arm. So what you just flip one in like that, okay? You won't be able to go as low, but you're doing one arm like that. And this is really good if you have a definite difference in your swimming in your pull from one arm to the other, because you can work on individual arms. When you're doing it two arms, obviously one arm is sharing the load for the other one. So it'll mean that you won't get that sort of change or difference in your rowing. And when you do work on one arm at a time, you're actually working a lot more stability muscles through your body than just with two, because we're, hey, we swim with one arm and then the other, not two together when we're doing triathlons. So that was a closed chain row where my body was moving and my hands were fixed. You also needed an open chain row. So what I want you to do, get your power band back, skinny one this time, put it through the top there. I always would do this on a downward angle for this one. Drop to one knee now. When you're doing this, same leg, same arm. So if I've got my right leg forward, it's my right arm. So for you, I'll show you my left arm's forward, it's my left arm that I'm pulling, okay? So with this one, just make sure you're at an angle that if you let your hand hang there, it's in a nice angle going upwards, okay? So it's just suspended up there if you like. So you can focus on just the pulling work, you don't have to do any of the lifting work. For this one, make sure that you are not rotating too much through your upper body. You're trying to be stable, 
okay, which again teaches you when you row and when you swim, you're stable through your core. You're not sort of rotating too much. So you've got to try and do some a bit of what they call anti-rotation work through your midsection, and that means using your glute. So if I'm pulling with my left arm, I'm squeezing my right glute. That'll help stabilize me through my back, okay? And you've just got to focus on making sure that core work is going well. Now when I pull through with the band, I want to make sure there's enough tension there for a start, but when I pull, it's shoulder down first, obviously this buttock squeeze this time, then you pull through, making sure the shoulder stays back as I let my hand go back, and then I release the shoulder. So think of shoulder blade retraction and depression, then it's a pull through with the arm, then it's a release with the arm, and then I protract the shoulder blade. So it's in that nice little sequence like that. You can break it down to doing just very robotic sort of work. Once you get good at it, then you're just doing a very nice smooth movement. So there's all your three rowing ones done. So with the swim leg, obviously it's very shoulder dominant, so we need to work on our shoulders. And what I suggest you work on is doing some stability work for your shoulder joint, namely work on your rotator cuff. Now, a lot of people miss this stuff, and what I want you to make sure of is you're doing your external and your internal rotation work. So when you're doing external rotation for the swim leg, I would not be down here. I also wouldn't be way up here. I'd be 45 degrees, which is one of my favorites. With this one, make sure that you're trying to not just think about, oh, I just need to do external rotation here. Think about, I want to be stable through my midsection again. There's a lot of theme on stability with this one, which is one of the biggest things for triathletes. They need to be stable, so they're really efficient. So when you are doing, say, external rotation like this, sets of 10 or 12 with this band, you're making sure you're not moving around in the upper body, okay? You want to be sort of really centered in the core here. Your shoulder blade also needs to be not moving, okay? So this shoulder blade needs to be minimal movement here, maximal movement through the forearm. So you're pivoting in external rotation like that. Obviously you work on both sides with this. And again, you'll be able to work on your side that is the worst, okay? And feel that side, maybe even doing more sets on the weaker side. So if you're one of these people that has a real deficiency in this rotation, maybe not so much on the pulling work or pressing work, but you really notice on banded rotation work, whether it be external or internal, I highly recommend that you start doing an extra set. If I give you three rounds, you're gonna do four rounds of this exercise, working on getting up to that 10, 12 rep range and trying to get full external rotation. So past zero degrees there into the plus sort of 10, plus 15, moving there to help you with that out of the water movement, okay? So once you've done your external, you've got to work on your internal. Now with internal, I work on a double band. What I wouldn't do is do two bands like that, as in one band doubled. I would do two bands. Now, the thing about this is it doesn't really matter if you've got different colored bands, and different strengths, because at the end of the day, it's one strength that you're lifting or moving. Let me do that. Um, so as long as you get these bands around they're the same length, get it up to shoulder height. This is the key with this one. So an internal rotation one, again, you can tighten it up as much as you like. Go up into 90 degrees, meaning elbows 90 degrees out from the shoulder, not down at 45, 90 degrees here. Keep a bit of tension on, walk forward, okay? And now this one is gonna really challenge you to hold your core, so you're not, I don't want you leaning forward into it. Okay, you've got to try and challenge yourself to stay absolutely upright and plant your feet. Then you work on internal rotation here, okay? So this is gonna help you with that pull stroke. Now, it also helps you with your range. So when I go backwards, I'm trying to challenge a little bit of shoulder range as well, because if you've got a bit more mobility in your shoulder as a swimmer, you'll get more efficient in the water. It's not gonna be as hard. So this range here, or that pullback will give me the stretch I need, and the range I need, and then the pull through is gonna help you with the strength through the water. So this one is super important for swimmers, and I definitely incorporate that into your regime. So let's just do the other side as well. Remember with all these ones, I'm doing one round of each today. You're gonna to end up probably doing three rounds. Now what you could do is do three rounds of each exercise and then move on to the next exercise. What I like doing is one round of each, okay? Repeat it three times. So I do exactly what I'm doing with you today and then go through that three times to get my reps and sets in. So this one here, really nice one again, 
working on left versus right. This is my surgical shoulder. So I know it's a little bit 5%, not quite as strong as this one, but in saying that, I've got more coordination because I'm a left-hander. So this one will do match it just about as much over time. Okay, now, once you've done those two, then you can work on some shoulder press. Now, what I wouldn't do is just work on shoulder pressing per se, okay? As a triathlete, you wanna make, make sure you focus on your stability components. So, if you're doing a shoulder press with a kettlebell like this, now this is eight kilos, 10% of my body weight. So, if you're doing a shoulder press like that, what I want you to make sure of it, it's not a military press, you're not way back here above your head, you're forward, okay, so your elbow is forward in front of your shoulder. The kettlebell rests on the outside, so you know you're in external rotation. What I would add on is a band. So instead of going heavier with this, because let's face it, we don't want to fatigue the absolute bejesus out of your shoulders, because you've probably got a swim session tomorrow. So what I want you to make sure of is you're working on more load by band load here, not vertical load. So with this one, this is what we call a lateral band. You have that band there, which is gonna make me work more on my rotator cuff. Then you grab the weight. Now this doesn't have to be too heavy, just make sure you get it sort of around about shoulder height. Is you step away so you get a bit of tension on there, and then you go through your shoulder press, okay? So the band is challenging me and trying to pull me that way. So I have to do more work through my rotator cuff to keep my arm outwards, okay? So which means a little more lateral rotation, which hey, is gonna be awesome for your swimming. But there's no more vertical load down on my delt, on my upper trap, and my shoulder, and my bicep tendon. So I'm not gonna fatigue that way. I'm just gonna fatigue more in the back of the shoulder. So for me, this works really well because it means that, like I said, I don't have to do heavier weight to get the same sort of workout in my shoulder. And hey, it's better for my swim leg anyway. So same thing this side, again, with this, making sure, and if you can look you know, in front of a mirror, you can check your form a little bit more. Make sure when you are pressing that your shoulder stays down the first part, you straighten and then lift your shoulder, and then shoulder down, back down again, okay? So it's sort of arm, shoulder, shoulder, arm. And always keeping it sort of in front, the elbow in front of your shoulder like that, which is gonna be perfect for your form, okay? So there's your shoulder press, and again, essential for you to do. We don't have to do a mass amount of shoulder work because, hey, you're having weights because you're doing a lot of shoulder work in the pool and there's gonna be a lot of sessions that you're doing, but these ones are absolutely essential for you as a triathlete. Okay, the second section is on core, or namely spinal stability, because you as a triathlete need to be stable between your lower body and your upper body. And it's an often forgotten thing, you know, you need to be stable and connect your legs to your upper body, be more efficient when you're on the swim, the bike, and the run. Now, I've given you two exercises for each video. So there's only going to be two in this, but when you put all those three videos together across the week, you've got six essential core exercises. So let's get into the first one. Now, I've put this relative to what you're doing. So when you're in the water, you're swimming, I'm going to put you in that sort of long position. So we're going to do a bird dog. And this will help keep you stable or more stable in the water, allow you to work on a little bit of core work, a little bit of spinal work without too much load. So with bird dogs, if I show you this way, the big thing about this is trying to not think about I've got a balance between an opposite arm, opposite leg. And you would have seen a lot of people doing these sort of things, okay, which is your bird dog. What I want you to make sure of is if you're looking at your lower back, Okay, you're focusing on that, that's the center part, that's the biggest thing you've got to be worried about is what position this lower back is in when you do that bird dog. So if I'm looking in the mirror, I can sort of see myself there, I wanna make sure I'm not in extension, I wanna be in neutral, I definitely don't wanna be in flexion, okay? So it's in that nice neutral spine there. When I do an opposite arm, opposite leg, always go one arm first. Before you start, make sure this is activated. The best way of doing that, Hold away to try and get some tone and some contraction through here so you're still breathing up top. So you maintain a neutral here. The second thing you're gonna do when you raise your arm is maintain a neutral this way. So if you're looking down, have a line through here, imagine the center of your spine is on that line. If I take one arm away, I don't wanna be shifting across to one side. So make sure when I raise that one arm forward and go to here, I'm keeping my center line and then my leg, I slowly straighten that leg and hold it there and keep the center line. Now I need to be not just balanced between the two, like I said, 
I need to be stable between the two. So I'm trying to be stable between my left hand, left arm, and my right knee. I want to push away from the floor to keep up there. I want this hand straight up and then pull back. And with this leg here, I'm pushing my heel back to the wall to activate my glute. So at that point there, I've got my glute connected through my lumbar fascia, through my arm. So I'm in that sort of position where I would be, if you imagine, going to pull through in the swim. So it's a very nice one to do, to think about pulling down into here, to be stable in that position, to think, if I can be stable there, then when I swim, I'm going to be connecting through this arm, kicking with those legs, that's going to give me stability through the swim, okay, and keep my bum maybe a little bit higher up in the water, so I'm not getting dragged, and so I'm going through the water a little bit better. So that's a really nice one to do. With this one, make sure you're doing sets of 10 seconds. So forward, up, pull back, hold my core on, keep stable, push my heel back, hold it for 10 seconds, okay? So I'm staying in that position, pushed away from the floor, still breathing, holding that there, and then down. I would aim for this one, if you're doing sort of one round at a time, like I said, where you're going through each exercise one round and then you're sort of doing three rounds of that, I would do 10 seconds on each side three times you're doing three runs of that. So you end up sort of doing nine of those. It's quite a lot, but it's so important. It's a bit taxing on the arms a little bit, but you'll find that this connection stuff is really good. So that's your first one. Second one is your front plank. Now you need front planks for the swim to try and keep your hips out of the water a little more to be a little bit stronger through here. You also need them for the run to keep upright. But in the run, I've got another abdominal exercise. So I've put the front plank in the swim set. So front plank, the best way to start off with this one, go down onto your elbows and get your position right with your hips first. So what you can do is look in the mirror, make sure your bum's not up in the air. You need to keep your hip joint in the same height as your shoulder joint, okay? So you don't want to be higher with your hips than your shoulders. You certainly don't want to be lower, okay? So try and keep your hip joint at the same level as your shoulder joint. Then make sure your elbows are directly under your shoulders, okay? Once you've got that position there, get that pelvic floor on so you get a little bit of TA activation and then crank it up with a little bit more obliques and abdominals through the front, okay? Then what you do is make sure you're pushed away from the floor, straighten one leg, get your glute on, straighten the other leg. Now, you'll find that you'll start shaking a little bit because it's an isometric contraction. So you're trying to hold it there for a long period of time, keep those glutes on, don't tilt under too much, just have that neutral spine, get your glutes on, hold your core on, stay away from the floor, okay? I would aim, if you're starting out with that one, try and get at least 20 seconds. You might think, oh, that's easy. If you can go to a minute, fantastic, but try and maintain your form. A lot of people can hold that for minutes or two minutes, but they're not actually turning on the glutes, they're not actually cranking enough up in here, and they're not keeping the knees straight. And usually the bum's up in the air too much or the bum's too low. So if you can start on your knees, so if you always make sure you're getting your form correct, look in the mirror, get that position correct there, keep your core on, bit of pelvic floor, push away, straighten one leg, clench your buttock, straighten the other leg, clench your buttock, then hold it you'll probably find you can't last as long as you thought because you're doing it correctly. And if you're doing it correctly, it's going to be way better for you down the track for the position you're going to be in when you swim and obviously when you're upright, the position when you're going to be when you're running. So lastly is the mobility section. Now I've put this last. You can most welcomely put it first if you want to do that warming up. Some people like doing stretching, mobility exercises when they're looser, when they're warmed up, they can really go do a stretch and it winds them down after the workout. Other people are so tight, they do it beforehand to loosen themselves up, so the exercise is better. I'll leave that up to you, but for this video, I've put it in last. Now, with swimming, or the swim leg, you need to make sure that you've got enough mobility through your thoracic. That's the most important part. Of course, shoulders as well, which we'll go through, but your thoracic spine is where you're gonna get the most amount of gains when you're in the water to get movement for the shoulders, so we wanna work on that part. First one I'd work on is getting a bit of spinal extension through your thoracic spine, a little bit of that, but it's namely the flexibility of your pecs in the front. So, easiest way to do that is grab your roller, sitting on that, lying down into this position. Now, obviously you want the roller long enough so you can get your head and your pelvis on the roller at the same time. This position here is your start position. All right, 
I want you to make sure that your lower back is not completely flattened in here, but it is also not arched off. So get your neutral spine, find it, hold it, keep it there. And this is where you're gonna to have to try and work on, if your ribs are starting to flare out like this, you need to try and tuck them down a bit. And that will involve a little bit of abdominal control here. So you're trying to actually improve you know, a bit of thoracic mobility by just getting your ribs down, okay? That'll stretch you out through your back a little bit to start with. The physical weight of me on this roller will give me that, a little bit of spine extension. So because I've got a natural thoracic curve, it's got that thoracic curve, being on a roll like this and keeping that position will actually stretch that curve a bit, okay? Which is gonna allow you a little bit more movement in the water. So that position there is gonna be quite important. Then what you go for is a chest. So you think of this exercise as two in one. You've got thoracic spine extension stretch and trying to control here, all right? So getting those ribs down a bit. Then you're doing chest. So I'd go arms out in a T, okay? So to find yourself, so imagine like your arms are straight out from your shoulders. Once you've got that position, try and keep your palms on the floor, and then you're gonna keep your neck long. So I think ribs, neck long, and then pull those elbows down to the floor, okay? If they're coming off the floor, you pull them down to the floor, and this is what we call like pulling into a W position. That'll give you a huge stretch from the front of your shoulder right through to your sternum on both sides. And you do both sides together with that. Some of you have had shoulder injuries before, just be a little bit careful, but Trying to make sure you keep your, you're trying to think elbows on the ground, back of your wrists on the ground, hands on the ground. If you start doing this, so you can see my hands come up, then basically you're too tight in front of the shoulders to come down. So you need to go back to where your hands go flat on the ground and stay in that position. Over time, you'll find you'll be able to get down further and further and further, and that'll really open you up through here. The great thing about that is, it'll give you more movement through the stroke, okay? Whereas if you're one of those people who's a, weekend warrior and you're sitting at a desk all the time and you are rounded and tight through here you'll find it sort of rather difficult in the water to start getting neck problems or shoulder problems because you haven't got enough mobility there so this one is the first one i'd go for to try and get you open up like that five minutes on that just one set okay you can do if you're doing three rounds of this i would split it down to maybe one or two minutes and do three rounds of that or five minutes and just one Okay, second mobility and almost the most important mobility is rotation because your thoracic spine does rotation the most, not extension, okay? So we wanna make sure that you're getting as much rotation in that spine as possible so you can mobilize through the water a little bit better. You don't wanna be stiff in this part here and have the arms doing all the work. You wanna be able to get a bit of rotation through the water to get the arm out. So to do that, well the easiest way to do that and the one I like the most is going and side-lying and do what we call book openers. Now these ones involve a little bit of breathing. So it does help you relax. If you've got a bit of tension around your back, it helps you relax a bit of that. But if you start off with two hands here, you're going to slowly roll backwards into rotation. I've got to keep my knees together and knees down though. And as I roll backwards, I'm going to slowly put my head back on the ground to there. And then this arm is gonna come up and act like a weight to rotate me that way. So I'm aiming, and I can already feel this starting to just stretch a little bit through here, this lower part of the thoracic. As I go backwards, I'm gonna look backwards a little bit as well. I'll get to the point where I sort of slow down because I'm tightening up and I almost stop a little bit. Now you can see I'm off the floor with my shoulder and my hand. I want to every breath over a minute, every breath I want to breathe out and let that arm hang a bit more. Think about unwinding like a corkscrew. I'm trying to get my right shoulder to the ground. So the back of my shoulder blade, every time I breathe out, trying to get it lower and lower and lower. So I'm gonna spend a whole minute working on my breathing and get that rotation better and better and better. You'll be quite surprised if you do three rounds of this that you're gonna do. By the third round, you probably find that shoulder is a lot closer to the floor than the first one and you get all the way over you still try to keep these knees down, okay? So, one minute to the right, one minute to the left, three rounds of that. You'll probably find that really opens you up through your thoracic and gives you that mobility a bit better. So when you're swimming, things aren't as rigid, there's less resistance, you're getting more out of the stroke. For your shoulder mobility, we covered external rotation range with that band internally we did before at the start of the video. 
The second one is internal rotation, which we haven't covered. Now that's gonna help you with the stroke through the water. What I suggest you do is tie a power band like that to a pole, put your hand through it and twist it around so it's locked in, so you don't have to grab it. Then put that in internal rotation behind your back. Now you just let it rest there. This hand here, if I show you like this, is gonna come behind it, okay, and hold it up. What I don't want you doing is trying to fight that band. The band is trying to pull you back into this way here. You're gonna try, with this hand, and increase that movement. So there's sort of two things going on. One, you're going higher up your back, and two, you're going further away from your back, okay, to get that range through the shoulder. Be careful with those people who have had either surgery or any old injuries in there, there might be a bit of tightness in the front, so just watch that. So try and stay upright, hold this hand, let it go backwards, and then what you do is to increase the stretch, you step forward. As you step forward, let the hand go backwards. Don't try and pull the band, okay? So if the band's at that point there, you walk away from your hand, and let it go further backwards, just keeping it up to get that nice stretch in the front. One minute, three rounds of that. Now the last mobility exercise for the swim leg is thoracic extension with arm extension. Now, I used to have this one on the bike leg, but I put it in the swim leg because it's part of the upper body, but it's really good for the bike. So when you see the bike video, this is the one you're gonna need for this as well. Because when you're on a tri bike and you're on your front bars, so if you're sitting on your seat and you're on your front bars, you need thoracic extension to get down in position and still look up. Okay, so those people who are really rounded through there and don't have good range through their shoulders, this is gonna be a really good one for you because you need to be able to maintain that position for a long period of time. And if you've got a very stiff thoracic back where you're really rounded, it's gonna be really difficult for you to hold that sort of position. You can start getting some neck problems. So this one is really good. I'll put in the swim leg because it does help you with your swimming as well. But just remember, it's gonna really help those people who have problems sitting on your aero bars. So, this one, grab your old trusty roller out again. Go to the point where you're stiffest in your back. You'll sort of know where that point is. You sort of do a few extensions. Okay, I can work it. Oh, there's my stiffness. Okay, well, that's the point where I feel I'm the tightest. And it's usually the most sort of rounded position of your back. Now, what you do is do one arm at a time. I would hold one arm around the back of your neck. So you just keep your neck in neutral. This arm here, what you're going to do is load that up above your head, and then as you go back, what I want you to do is let the weight of the arm pull you backwards. You're gonna extend over the roller. However, I don't want you just rolling and arching because that's gonna get extension too much. You've gotta try and keep the ribs from flaring, so you keep them down a bit. This hand then goes backwards, and you reach backwards that way, and then slowly, over about 30 seconds, try and breathe out and just try and slowly deep stretch one side at a time, okay? So this is gonna buy us a little more left side, then I'm gonna do the right. So I wanna try and sort of keep breathing out, try and keep my tummy on, my ribs down, which is rather difficult when you're tight, like me, and just breathe out and let the roller do the work. Let the roller stretch you into extension. You may find you have to come back and just sort of shuffle and shift because you might have more than one area that's a bit tight. You might have quite a few segments there. And then go again, reach back, Breathe out and try to extend through your back and really let that hang out there. You're going to have to go for 30 seconds at a time. you probably find you feel all the tightness come in here a little bit and just open yourself up there. And that's going to give you a bit more range through your thoracic and a bit more range through your arms so you can hold that position for longer. Plus on the swim, it's going to be a little bit better. So there's my swim leg, okay? So you're going to go from stability and strength, a bit of core work, a bit of mobility work, just gonna help you a lot with all your movement patterns, get you a little bit better in the pool or in the ocean. Stay tuned for part two, where we're gonna work on the bike.